you probably have seen in the news lately um, how often this happened where traffic comes to a standstill on a highway somewhere and you can't go anywhere. There's no going forward nor going back. People even had to abandon their cars in some places. But did you ever wonder how long an electric car would last in such a situation? How long could you stay in there and keep the heat going? Well, that is what I'm going to put to the test today. Hi, I'm Mike from the Rural Montana family and we are in Rural Montana and it is the 1st of March in 2023 and uh, well yeah we still got lots of snow it is cold out the car reports here 16 degrees at uh, 8 12 in the morning um, actually the weather station inside reports 11 degrees <laughs> so the car has some residual heat because what I did I, it was plugged in overnight and it was charging and I preheated the car so because I want to make this somewhat real um, it's just like I would have been driving and now I'm stuck. So I moved it away from the charger. I moved it away from out under the carport. I'm in the wide open at this point. And uh, so, but yeah, the car reports a little bit warmer because of the residual heat from uh, charging and uh, preheating the car. <clears throat> and but now I'm sitting here and the state of charge here is 74%. So we could assume maybe I charged to 90% or 80% and was driving some and now I'm at 74%. I intentionally don't want to start at 100% because you're certainly not going to be at 100% when you get stuck in traffic. So. The test already has started basically. 74%, 8, 12, that's the time we're going by. And now I just have to sit in the car here for hours. And I wanna keep this somewhat real. So um, what I'm gonna do right now, the car is actually in park, but I'm gonna switch it to drive because when you first get into the traffic and you slow down and eventually come to a stop, you probably would be in drive. And I have uh, hold enabled in my car. It's on single pedal driving. And so currently you can see here on the display, the car is basically ready to drive, which also means uh, the brake lights are on at this point. Also, if you look here, you can see currently the lights are on <clears throat> and then I do have the fog lights on and the headlights are on. So all the lights are on at this point and that's using power. So that is additional things that can use power while you're in the car. And so I'm going to let it sit here for about 10 minutes in hold. So it's 8.15 now. I'm going to go till about 8.25. Um, and then I'll put it in park because yeah, just assuming I came to a standstill in traffic, I probably would be sitting here without putting it into park. The headlights would be on, um, uh, the brake lights would be on all this cool stuff. So this is all using power and that is basically real life. Also, um, you probably have a cell phone with you. My cell phone is, uh, down here on the charger right there. This is a wireless charging pad and uh, so yeah, you're probably charging uh, your cell phone as well. And uh, most likely, depending on the car you're in, um, you may just have the, the radio going and you'll be playing on your phone or something. Um, here in the Tesla, we have uh, the advantage of being able to go online on the main screen here. And we can also uh, watch YouTube videos or Netflix in the car. So that is pretty cool. So I will do that as I'm sitting in here because, well, obviously it's boring to sit in traffic, right? Um, 
and uh, yeah it's just a matter of sitting here for the next few hours and entertaining myself as I as if I would be stuck out there and I'm gonna do this I don't know three hours probably I guess and uh, just to see how much uh, energy uh, this car is using to stay warm um, while I'm doing regular stuff and then we can average that out to get an idea of how long you in your car could last because this is probably kind of somewhat the extreme here this is a 2018 Tesla Model 3 so this has a PTC heater resistive type heat not the heat pump so this is not as energy efficient for heating as the heat pump. So this is kind of going to be worst scenario in regards to power consumption because the heater uses a lot of power. I'm going to use the electronics in here. I make sure my cell phone is charged. Um, yeah, so most likely uh, your car will be no worse than this one. I mean, if the temperature is lower, obviously um, there may be more heat required, but this is not a, an uncommon temperature. We're below freezing. It will warm up a little bit here in the next couple hours, obviously. Um, I don't know if the sun's going to come out. It's pretty cloudy today. If the sun comes out, we actually will have some uh, solar heat gain here in the cabin. Uh, which means the cabin will warm up the heater will have to work a little bit less but we'll see uh, just how this goes but uh, for now yep yeah, um, I'm sitting here and it's 818 now we're still at 74 percent and uh, yeah what the heck would I do I'm just waiting for traffic to move so one thing you want to do regardless if you're driving in a car, I mean, bring uh, water. So I always have water with me, no matter what. Uh, doesn't really matter how far I go because you could have a breakdown or something could be happening. Even if I just go five or 10 miles, I could be stuck. And so always bring water regardless. Have water with you, I always bring um a water bottle with me in case something happens I do at least have water because many people they, they don't do that they think oh I go to the gas station there and get my coffee or I go to the, the, the grocery store and pick something up real quick well you can't if you're stuck so bring it from home um, always carry some water with you in the car also today I'm just uh, dressed in a, in a hoodie and sweats not very uh, heavy in general when I'm out on the road in the winter time I'm dressed a little bit better um, or or at least have other clothes with me so I have no jacket in here I have no gloves I have no hat today nothing in the car at this point but I'm sitting right here in the front of the house so <laughs> it's not really that important but usually when I'm on the road in the winter time I will bring hat gloves jacket um, and obviously depending on how cold it is on the outside I may actually wear uh, long chants long underwear right um, uh, maybe even have a, a second layer with me that I'm not necessarily wearing but have it with me also on longer trips uh, in general I bring a blanket um, a blanket can be very helpful so you can maybe turn down the heat a little bit and cover yourself under a blanket to save a little energy it uh, can come in handy if you maybe need to help somebody else that has an issue while you're stuck in traffic or somewhere so a blanket is always great to have in the car so on long trips we definitely also bring a blanket um, you may want to consider having uh, some snacks with you you don't need to bring a, a huge something with you but you know have a couple uh, energy bars or whatever snake snickers snack bars something that um, you know maybe something that can provide you some energy 
and uh, give you a little bit of something in your stomach so you're not really dying from hunger. <laughs> you, you won't be literally dying from hunger because you can easily go a uh, couple weeks without uh, food. You just can't go without water. So definitely bring water, maybe have a couple snacks with you. That's what we in general do, like especially if we go on a road trip, we bring snacks with us and so uh, we can snack if we really get hungry so we don't have to stop or in case something happens we have some snacks with us if we're forced to stop and can't go anywhere another thing is you may have to go to the bathroom while you're stuck and that's a little more difficult especially if there's cars in front of you cars behind you cars everywhere um you it's maybe extremely cold out uh, maybe like blizzard conditions outside so going to the bathroom can be very difficult um, obviously in an emergency situation if if you get out of the car and go off the the side of the road to pee um, you just gotta find a spot to hide I guess but nobody will put you in jail for this or do anything right because other people will have to do the same thing but it's always good to have toilet paper with you or wipes. So uh, we in general have like a uh, about a half a roll of toilet paper in every car. That's always in there just in case. And uh, if we're going on road trips, usually we bring along some wipes as well. These wipes can not just come in handy to clean down below. They can come in handy to clean other messes as well. So. Uh, consider that there's always um, stuff you should bring if uh, you know if you're out in conditions like this here at temperatures like that now it shows 17 degrees here but we're sitting so uh, the temperature is actually a little bit lower out there but you want to have certain supplies with you Many of the people that got stuck lately, they said, well, we didn't have anything to drink. We didn't have any food. We didn't have, we didn't have, we didn't have. Well, oh, all right, look at this. Uh, the car just shifted itself into park after about 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, the lights are still on, we can see there. So, but the brake lights are now off. So I've been sitting in traffic already 10 minutes. But anyway, yes, people always say, oh, we didn't have, we didn't have. Well, whose fault is that? Well, it's their own fault, okay? So make sure you have basics with you when you're stuck in traffic. Even if you're only going for a short drive, make sure you have the at least the very basics with you. That is very, very important um, to have it somewhat comfortable and in, in most cases uh, if you're stuck in total traffic it's not a survival situation because they can get you out if it's a survival situation like you know if, if something really bad happened an accident obviously a helicopter could come in and pick somebody up and stuff like that but you want to have your basics with you good clothing Definitely water, preferably some snacks, have some toilet paper, have some wipes. Um, and well, you probably have your cell phone anyway. Who doesn't? <laughs> so, all right. The first 10 minutes are up and the car went into park now. And at this point, I'm probably, uh, I don't know, look for a movie on Netflix or something. I mean, we hope that you have good reception where you're at. Um, because otherwise if you don't have any reception or not any good reception you can't even do anything on your cell phone really and the car may not work so or the car the the Netflix here and the Tesla may not work if there is not enough reception all right um, well I think I'm going to Netflix now see if I can watch a movie all right one movie later <laughs> okay i'm still sitting in this dang car just for you <laughs> in uh all this traffic here oh guess what happened no more traffic <laughs> so it is um let's see uh 10 42 
it shows 40 degrees now the sun is actually shining on the front of the car right now so i assume that shows way more than it really is um i'm pretty sure that's it we're down to 70 percent so it is uh basically two hours two and a half hours since i started this in the two and a half hours um the car used four percent and i didn't save anything the temperature here is set to 72 i started out at 73 early on but it got too warm pretty quick so i set it down to 72 and i've just been sitting here <laughs> watching that movie or watching a movie it's not the one you've seen there i watched another movie but anyway so so far i used uh four percent and uh my phone actually right now it's laying here but it's been on the charger there i'm also charging over here the batteries there's that's a box with three batteries for the gopro that's been charging there as well so not saving any uh power here so four percent in about two and a half hours um well i think we'll go another maybe hour see if i watch another movie then it'll be a little longer maybe i watch some youtube i don't know yet i mean traffic is uh so terrible out here i mean i'm stuck for quite a while longer <laughs> it was actually amazingly comfortable in here watching this movie i didn't think it would be that comfortable for sitting in a car the sound was great the sound system in these teslas is really great no doubt about it so uh yeah overall not too bad so far i have to go to the bathroom <laughs> so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is uh well just like if i would be stuck in traffic i guess um i could go behind the tree here too just like if i would be stuck in traffic but maybe i'll go in the house real quick but what i'm gonna do here is uh let's see there we're gonna set that to keep keep this warm in here <laughs> and uh, i'm going in the house and in there i'll take a picture real quick of the weather station so we have a more accurate temperature and uh, i'm gonna put this on the screen here so you can see what the actual temperature is because it's not 40 degrees out there already maybe later this afternoon but not now it's just because of the sun is shining on the front of the car the car is sitting here i got the the heater going so there is there is some residual heat hitting that sensor as always so yeah well i'll go do that and then uh, i'll check back in later all right i'm already back from my bathroom break <laughs> so um yeah i checked and here's the picture of the weather station it is actually only 27 degrees so we're still below freezing and yeah 70 percent it's a 1048 now so a good two and a half hours and this here shown 42 degrees i can see the sun just shines right around uh, onto the front bumper it doesn't come up any higher yet but uh it shines on the front bumper and somewhere in there is that temperature sensor and along with the, the warmth i'm creating here because it is uh well as we said earlier 72 degrees in here so um and this test is more real than many other tests i've seen because uh some people just use camp mode but if you're actually in the car you don't necessarily use camp mode you're doing more stuff here you're charging things and so on so that's why i'm sitting in here also sitting in the car is usually different um yeah you could put some weight in here but it's really not the same um i mean sometimes you might step on the brake pedal and fire the car up and that's what i did just uh, as i came back in i actually fired the car up and uh so yeah it's a little bit different if actually somebody is in here and doing things and using the electronics here and so on and so forth and so i hope this makes for a really real test <laughs> so yeah i guess um i don't know watch some more youtube or well watch some youtube or watch maybe another movie um like i said i was kind of shooting for three hours but uh, maybe i go a little bit longer 
as I said, it wasn't too terrible sitting in here. Um, the the movie was good, the sound was good, the picture was good, so not bad at all. So uh, yeah, well, I'll figure out what I'll do and I'll come back a little later. It is four hours now, I have to bring the seat back a little bit <laughs> to be a little bit more comfortable. Um, four hours sitting in the car is a long time, but uh, yeah, it's four hours now. It is uh, 12, 12 right there. We are down to 68%. This shows now 39 degrees. Um, so it's uh, still a little bit less than 39 degrees. Um, at some point I checked inside and it was uh, 37 degrees, but the sun was actually shining onto the weather station. So that may be a little bit off too. Um, but yeah, uh, we had a little sun on the car at some point and now we're back in the shade. Um, the climate control has been going here at 72 and you can see the seat heat's still on. So it is still a little bit on the cold side here. So yeah, um, we started at 74%. We're down to 68 now in four hours. That is uh, what, 6% in four hours. <clears throat> That is not too bad. That is uh, one and a half percent of charge in uh, per hour. So I could sit here for a long, 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 long time at one and a half percent. I mean, uh, that would easily go 50 hours uh, sitting here and using uh, the entertainment in here. And still, yes, I have my... Uh, phone on the charger and here that the battery box is still uh, plugged in as well so <clears throat> yeah I mean if you get stuck in traffic let's say at a 30% charge and you're using 1.5% per hour I mean heck if you're stuck 10 hours then you're still at 15% so there's still 15% left to drive somewhere that can still get you 30 miles possibly so um, you're really not gonna be stuck uh, faster than with a uh, with an internal combustion engine car so I mean it all depends on how much charge you have but if if you get stuck with an internal combustion engine car it also depends on how much fuel you have in the tank and many people uh, quite frequently don't have much left. Like if they live out here and they need to drive to town <clears throat> uh, to work, let's say, and they would fill up fuel in town that day. So they may only have an eighth of a quarter of a tank or an eighth of a tank and, and barely could make it to town if they get stuck. I mean, they could run out real easy, right? So. The same thing is uh, for us here, if we get stuck, we could run out, but not usually real easy because we filled up at home. So we usually charge to 75% um, pretty much all year round. In the winter time, we use a little bit more. In the summertime, we use a little bit less, but with that 75%, we can easily make it to town and back and still have about 35 or 40 percent left when we come home so even if we would get stuck somewhere we would have plenty we could sit forever well not forever but even if we would get stuck for 10 hours let's say and we would have 40 percent uh, we would sit for 10 hours that would bring us down to 25 percent that's still plenty to make it home for us so an electric car is not any less safe in uh, extreme conditions, in extreme weather where you can get stuck. Um, yes, if you would have a car with a full tank of gas, that car potentially could last longer idling there, but maybe not. There's also other issues when you idle cars forever and ever and ever. There can, there's potential other issues and uh, a, a, an engine could actually fail to run and then you would be cold while here we're literally only running the heater. So, well, except for the entertainment. 
So yeah, I think this uh, can show that EVs are just fine. If you get stuck out there, just make sure you have a little spare gas. <laughs> just like if you would drive a uh, internal combustion engine vehicle. Out here, we always made sure we have enough fuel in there to get for and back and really don't run on fumes. And we do the same thing with an electric car. We bring a few items with us because there is a potential of uh, getting stuck in the weather. And that potential nowadays seems to be everywhere as there has been snowfall just here a few days ago in along the West Coast in uh, Portland and uh, even down to uh, Los Angeles. So. And in many places, cars got stuck and were actually abandoned. So uh, make sure you bring a few emergency supplies with you, the ones I mentioned in the beginning, and make sure you have a, a few extra percent of charge. So now we know about 1.5% of charge per hour here. And this is based on this battery here. And this battery is a 75 kilowatt hour uh, battery. So. 1.5% um, is roughly one kilowatt uh, per hour that has been used. So if you have a uh, like a Chevy Bolt with a 66 kilowatt hour battery and you would use one kilowatt an hour, obviously from full to empty, it would be uh, 66 hours basically. But let's say you're at 50%. So you would have 33 kilowatt hours available if you use one per hour. Um, if you go 15 hours, that still leaves 18 kilowatt hours left. And 18 kilowatt hours is quite a bit. If you're going, uh, let's let's go really low and you're only uh, going two miles per kilowatt hour. That is extremely low. Even here, we're always at about 2.5 to 2.9 in the winter time. So let's but say at 18 kilowatt hours, you can only go two times two two miles per kilowatt hour. So that would be still 36 miles you could go. So for us, that would be an easy drive to town or an easy drive home. So it would not be an issue and we could charge in town and we could charge at home. So really not a problem at all. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a thumbs up for this video. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. But also go back uh, and uh, check out all our uh, older videos from the last couple of years. We have lots of cool stuff about wintertime driving, summertime driving, EVs in general. There is still, uh, even if a video is a year or two old, it's still relevant. It still has great information in it. So if you haven't been following the channel for very long, please go back and check out those videos as well. Also go down below in the description and click the link to our Redbubble store. We got some merch there. Maybe you'll find something you'd like. In any event, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Well, if you're still around since the movie wasn't done at uh, 12, whatever, 15 or what it was, I finished the movie now. I spent another hour in the car. It is now 1.14, we are at 66% here, it shows 39 degrees. Uh, the sun is shining on the car right now, it's pretty pretty warm in here actually. Um, but at some point it was a little cooler and I actually turned it up to 74. <laughs> now it's quite warm, so... But yeah, so I spent another hour in here, we're now down to 66, so that means 8% in what, 5 hours? So you can make your calculations, but uh, yeah, um, I could spend the rest of the day in here, no problem without getting cold and uh, still being entertained due to this thing here. That is pretty cool. So yeah, just a little update at the very end here.